Hello and welcome. Today I'll be showing you guys how to make a throne for your V Rising castle. This video is the second in a five part series, and each part will show a different example and time lapse of how each one was made. I'll be explaining the process throughout each build so that you too can make an awesome throne room for your castle. I've also made several other videos on castle building, and I'll be linking those in the description below. Alright, now let's get started. This build is what I call the Skyward Throne. Part of the reason why is that you can actually see the sky since this is actually an outdoor throne. I wanted to make sure I showed examples of both indoor and outdoor throne rooms, and yeah, I definitely wanted to have a few of them featured in a garden setup. So for the beginning of this build, I immediately started placing down pillars. I started doing measurements, trying to make sure that everything I placed down made sense and the spacing was correct. So there was a lot of pre-planning kind of going on here with this build. I ended up putting up more and more columns. Everything started looking great. Now I started working on the second floor here, and this is where stuff starts to get complicated. Once you reach that second floor scenario, you get to a point where you have to make sure you're using your invisible foundation tiles appropriately. Otherwise, you're not really able to space out everything and having to go back and redo several sections over and over again can get pretty exhausting. So I definitely want to avoid that. So now that we've reached the third floor of the castle, I started going back and making the columns or the pillars high enough up that it kind of gave that very, you know, grand feel to this throne room. On the side here, I actually ended up placing a staircase as kind of like, I guess you could say scaffolding or something. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I used that to kind of get up higher to certain areas I couldn't reach. So maybe building this kind of long uh, tiled throne room might not be a bad idea to like kind of have spaces on the left and right sides where you can, you know, go up there and actually fix stuff started adding the bottom floor. I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted the window arrangements to be at first, but I knew that my color scheme, I wanted to have blue windows. Uh, something I did, which was kind of a little bit different than my normal builds, is I actually used the slightly lighter blue on the windows themselves, but then all of the furniture and lighting and everything else used the dark blue. Part of the reason why is that I wanted it to pop a little bit more, be a little bit brighter, and I thought that the dark blue windows just kind of bled into the um, curtains a little too much. At this point, I remove my body from the screen and I start uh, going wild with my decorating here. This function that I use to do this is called toggle observe you can use it in the console if you type in toggle observe one it makes your body completely invisible so now that i got the third and first floors kind of figured out a little bit i was like okay the sun is shining nicely into this area but i really want to have something on the second floor i started thinking more and more about this layout and as you can see the lighter blue on the windows definitely makes it shine a lot better in the daytime occasionally you'll see me go up in the sky and double check my work making sure everything is symmetrical we're going back to that symmetrical method as we did in the previous castle throne room tutorial and i wanted to make sure that you know i kind of showed different examples of how that technique or how that is very important when it comes to a throne room at this point it was just a lot of going back making corrections deciding where i wanted the windows i ultimately decided to go for a every other window method and then just kind of did a, an interchangeable window setup on the front end of this build and on the very back i actually removed the windows to try and account for the fact that you're not even going to see that part of the throne room once it's completed here. When I was messing around with this throne, trying to decide which one to place down and kind of wiggling it back and forth to measure it, uh, in hindsight, I probably should have used a tile flooring to make sure that my alignment was better. 
and it probably would have saved me a couple seconds of time there. At this point, I started adding more and more lighting, and I used the Balefire sconces. I, you guys know I love to use those on the outdoor stuff because they're the ones that have like the big flame. Um, very, very cool. I love those hanging lanterns. And I started adding some shrubbery to the outside. Well, more not the outside, but more like the walls uh, that go along the sides of the throne room area. And I wanted to make sure to keep a, a constant feel and look to be very consistent so that all of the pillars and all the stuff eventually does get covered in the castle wall vegetation. At this point, it's just me trying to reach all the way back, trying to make sure I hit all the crispy angles in order to get exactly what I want. And of course, I waited till nighttime. Then I came back, decided to work on this a little bit more. I decided to use different curtains. Uh, I didn't want to use a super floofy curtain for this build per se, just because it is an outdoor build. So you don't necessarily want some like crazy indoor looking um, curtains in order to kind of accomplish the look so I ended up going with the third option. At this point there was more and more and more things I needed to add on the walls. The walls took a very long time in order to get them all completely covered without missing anything. Um, you know this level of detail and dedication isn't something that I expect most people to like kind of take the time to do but when someone actually does go through all that effort it tends to look pretty cool. At this point I was kind of starting to think about what I wanted to do underneath the staircase and soon you'll be seeing me kind of make uh, my rounds there but before I did that I ended up creating uh, pathways on the left and right side underneath the staircase on the second floor just so I can access all of the spots I missed that I couldn't see from the platform itself. Eventually I do end up removing those with invisible foundation though. The reason why there's so much invisible foundation when it comes to the pillars and the way that it works is that if you have a, a pillar that's kind of freestanding and you want to add another pillar on top to extend the height of it, there has to be some kind of foundation attached to it in order for that to work. So that's why I've been using a lot of the invisible foundation here. Don't be afraid to add temporary foundation just to stand on so you can reach those areas of the castle that maybe are a little bit harder to get to or out of reach because you can always go back and remove it with invisible foundation. At this point I started working on the bottom area and you can see that I'm starting to put more lighting down here. I'm starting to think a little bit more about what I want and I decided I wanted this area right underneath or right behind the staircase, uh, well the first staircase to be more of a horse enclosure so that was cool. I was thinking more and more about what to put underneath here because I knew I wanted a garden maybe with some kind of sitting area. At first I started putting a fountain here but then ultimately I decided to remove it. Uh, you'll see me experimenting with various bushes of different kind. Um, because I am in the Silverlight area with this plot, I decided to kind of follow the theme of the kind of RNG floor. And of course, it's important to uh, have enough blood in your system to continue the build. So that's what that was right there. These horse statues were kind of a pain to put together. Well, they're not statues, they're actually hedges. Part of the reason was that I wanted to have flowers sprout up from the base of them, but I thought maybe the blue flowers would work, but they weren't actually tall enough to be visible. 
So I thought a little bit more about it and ultimately I ended up going with sunflower seeds. It took me several tries to get this right. And of course, the sunflowers actually look pretty nice. I realized I had to redo that one though, because I realized that it was a little misaligned and I didn't want them to be misaligned for the build. At this point, I'm just trying to add a little bit more shrubbery to the area, trying to create a little bit more life on this halfway point between the first and third floors of the castle. I also was kind of experimenting with what kind of pathing I wanted to use as far as garden pathing goes. I changed it a couple of times, I believe, and in the end, I didn't end up going with this particular pavement. I wanted to add archways on the sides so that it was very obvious to any visitors that they could walk through the tunneled areas. I wanted it to feel kind of like a tall tunnel, even though it wasn't really underground. I started adding some planters, you know, trying to kind of feed into the life that was already there with all of the shrubbery that had already been added. And of course, you can't have a nice garden without somewhere to sit, so I started placing some benches. Then I started getting a little bit more detailed with my build. I started adding a few lots, and because I used the grass tiles, I was able to use the regular planting plots directly on the ground, rather than having to use a square planter. I also wanted to add some bird baths to uh, kind of give the place a little bit of life. This is the part where I start messing around with the different types of tiles. And I think at this point, I, I think this is when I made the decision to uh, swap to the one that I ultimately went with. I decided to enclose the horse hedges on the back with a bunch of hedges and created a small sitting area. I messed around with the flooring a lot here because I couldn't quite decide what color combination I wanted, but it wasn't just about the color combinations. I also had to focus on what setup I wanted and how I wanted things to be looked at. So the separation of the tiles by the grass was very important because it kind of tells you where you can place furniture and things like that and the space look like it's actually designated for that purpose. I also added some cypress trees because I think they look nice. And of course I have my white cherry blossom trees. Man, those trees, they grow up so fast. I'm just kidding, I just sped up the time, but you know. <laughs> and of course I put down some planters in the horse area without any shrubbery. And part of the reason for that, well, when I say without any shrubbery, I mean on the actual thing, but I did put some snow flowers in there. But the reason why was because I wanted it to look like a feeding area for the horses. So I'm pretty happy with how it ended up in the end. And as you can see, I started adding more of these planters on the side, just trying to fill up the space in a way that kind of made sense without being too repetitive. And I think the hard part was just getting the snowflowers to be underneath the different planters as well. This is where things start to get a little bit interesting. I put a... 
I put an emphasis on the hedges here to try and get a nice rounded appearance around the throne or around the back of the throne and I had just enough space to add two more white cherry blossoms back there so I felt like I might as well throw them in. This part where I started lining the base of the throne was a little bit more complicated. Um, getting the flowers to be perfectly aligned in the places that I want was really a very tedious process. I think that's one of the hardest things to do for like any kind of outdoor environment in a castle is when you're planting individual plants like that. It's just, it's very, it's not only time consuming, but if you mess up one thing, it throws off the flow and having to go back and correct it later is not ideal. I knew I wanted to have some seats or something up here, so I ended up going back to the sunflowers uh, for those horse hedges as well. Then I put down some seating. I kept some water fountains to try to create a little bit of uh, visual variety in the area. And of course, we can't have a throne outside without some kind of cover. And uh, yeah, ended up using the mist makers here. And we're getting closer and closer to completion. At this point, I'm just kind of going back and filling in areas that looked a little too plain, a little bit too uninhabited. Uh, I didn't want any part of this build to look like it was a forgotten area or something that I just neglected to decorate. So that was kind of big. And of course, I added that gate in the front, which added a little bit more uh, pizzazz to this build. So if you wanted to do something like this in your castle and have it as like a exclusive outdoor part of the castle, if you have a really big plot like this, um, you could definitely do that. At this point, I started experimenting with the heights of the garden planters, and I really like how I have them set up in front of the throne there. I think it just looks really cool. And of course, I can't forget uh, these statues here, the horse statues. I wanted to make sure that I had some kind of shrubbery in there to try and um, complete the look. I think at this point I was just double checking, making sure I didn't forget anything, doing my last uh, walk around look, my last patrol. This build was kind of tedious to make, but it did look really cool in the end, I think. Oh yes, and I almost forgot to add some lighting. I noticed a couple of mistakes in the back and yeah, that's how we got this uh, build completed. So tell me, what do you guys think of this build? Is this something you'd be interested in adding into your castle? If so, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I have three more videos coming out that are similar to this one, but will feature very different kinds of throne rooms. So make sure to uh, keep an eye out for those and those will be arriving shortly. For those of you who don't know, my name is ShiloQ. I'm a Shiloweed's Queenly Reaper and Guide to the Underworld. I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube, and usually on Wednesdays nowadays, I stream V Rising. Feel free to stop by and say hello. I'm more than happy to answer questions or even just uh, get feedback on the castles I'm working on. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much guys for watching this video. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, Sholo out.